Hello everyone and welcome to a new Sega Mega Drive Genesis game dev tutorial. In the previous lesson we covered how to automatically create high color images like the one you're seeing on your screen right now. And in today's lesson we're going to continue on from that and we're going to add a logo as if this was a title screen of a Sonic Adventure demake for the system. Since we're only using one background layer at the moment it makes sense to make the logo use the foreground layer. That way you don't have to worry too much about the size of the logo or any potential sprite flicker. However, for the purposes of the lesson today, I will be displaying the logo as a sprite. This will give us an opportunity to take more of a deep dive into the VRAM to see how SGDK allocates the VRAM resources between the uh, background tile data and the sprite tile data. The way the VRAM is automatically allocated can cause some problems depending on what kind of game you're making. So I'm going to show you how to change this allocation to meet your particular needs. And finally, we'd also be taking a look at how much VRAM we have in total, just so you have a good idea when you're creating graphics for your game of how much space you have to play with. As usual, any Patreon supporters can head over there and download the source code for this lesson. For everyone else, I'll quickly go through our starting point here. In the last lesson, we were able to utilize all four palettes for the background because we didn't need any other graphical elements on the screen. But since we're using a logo here, we will have maybe one palette for the logo. So I'm going to recreate the image, but using only three palettes instead of four. Thankfully, I think once you get above you know, two or three palettes, you're reaching the point of diminishing returns. So as the um, three palette version takes form, I think you'll see that it's actually not too bad. It's fairly close to the original. I also use that color tool with the logo, but instead of having three palettes, of course, we're only using one palette here, one palette of 16 colors. Plus I changed the transparent color to pink. Again, the result I think is not too bad considering it's just a quick conversion job. What we're going to do next is take those 16 colors and add them to our new three palette background. If you're a little confused about why we need to do this, just go back a couple of lessons and rewatch the um, tutorial I did on the fading in colors. As you can see here, I've already swapped out our four palette Sonic Adventure background with the three palette one in resources.res. And I've also changed the um, Adam image, which was our Adam sprite, and I've swapped out for the logo. And of course, don't forget to change the dimension sizes of the sprites when you do this. Back in main.c, I'm going to uncomment out the adding of the Adam sprite and also uh, change the position of the Adam sprite just so he appears on the screen. And before I forget, I should also change the PAL to PAL3 because we're using the fourth palette for the Adam Sprite. This final step isn't really necessary, but I want to be able to move the logo around the screen using the controller. So I'm going to uncomment out the handle input and I'm going to take the um, set sprite position from the camera function. I'm going to pull it in our while loop. And with that done, if we now save and compile and open up the ROM, this is the result we get. Although the logo itself looks nice, if you look at the bottom of the image, you'll notice what seem to be corrupted tiles. This is actually caused by a VRAM problem, but thankfully it's quite easy to fix. But to make the problem more obvious, first of all, I'm going to take the, uh, sprite logo, the logo sprite and I'm going to add an animation to it. And if you need a reminder of how animations work in SGDK, simply uh, take a look at my previous tutorial. I think it's from a couple of years ago, one of the first ones I did on how to animate sprites. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to keep the animation very simple. I'm simply going to create a square. So that means that this sprite is going to keep thick in between the Sonic Adventure logo and this very basic square I'm drawing. And don't forget to change the speed of the animation from 0 to, for example, 10 in resources.res. After saving, compiling and opening the ROM, I think you'll see that the problem is more obvious now. You can see that the um, final parts of the background image has been in effect painted over by the sprite tiles. Using the GEMS emulator, if you go to CPU, Debug, Genesis and VDP, it will give you a nice view of the current state of the VRAM. And I think you can see here that before the um, tiles, the background tiles are finished, you've already got these sprite tiles painting over them. You can see here that we have plenty of space in VRAM at the bottom, all those black squares. So why don't we move it so that these sprites, they um, appear a bit further down in the VRAM rather than writing over the background tiles. While I'm simplifying things here, you can think of the Mega Drive's VRAM as having enough space for 
around 1,400 tiles. Of those, SGDK automatically allocates around the first 1,000 tiles for the backgrounds, and then you have 400 left for the sprites. Fortunately, we can manually tweak this allocation, and that's what we're going to do to fix our problem. However, before we do so, let's first take a closer look at the images we're using and see how much unique tiles they each have. The latest version of a sprite includes very neat tile functionality. I won't explain too much about it here because the next lesson will be a huge lesson on how to use this. For now we're going to use it to count the tiles and if you look on the left hand side this is the tile set for the image and if I slightly move it here you can see that we have 1, 000, over 1000 tiles here which is why the um, allocations are such that where the sprat is painting over part of it. If we zoom in on the image itself, we'll see where each tile is uh, represented. Remember, each unique tile has its own index, just like it works with the colors, and then they're simply added into the image like this. Now for this particular image, because it's uh, rather than like a level tile set, we'd have lots of uh, repeated patterns. This is just a, a whole image that we've converted. So most of the tiles here are going to be unique tiles. There are a few, for example, maybe in the where the thumbs are or where the uh, any white areas where they have the same index they're using the same tile, it's just a basic white tile. But most of the we do these converted whole images, mostly they're going to be made up of entirely uh, unique tiles, unlike a, a level tile set, for example. Thankfully, the console has enough VRAM to display an entire screen of unique tiles, plus have a, a few spare left over, so we're pretty safe here. But you always have to be careful not to go over the roughly 1400 uh, unique tile limit when you're designing a level or doing some kind of uh, imagery on the screen. And if we just switch over and take a quick look at our logo, you can see that we just have over maybe 142 unique tiles, so thankfully that's well within that 1400 limit. Okay, so now that we know that we have approximately 1400 uh, tiles to play with in VRAM and that SGDK automatically allocates around 1000 of those to the backgrounds and then the remaining 400 are sprites, let's now go ahead and head back to our code and see how we can change this allocation to meet our needs. What we need to do is instead of using uh, SPR in it to initialize the sprite engine, we use a different function instead, SPR underscore init x. If you read the description, you can see that when we use the regular SBR init to initialize the sprites engine, it allocates automatically 420 tiles to the sprites. So that's why it's overwriting the uh, background image tiles, the end of the tiles, because remember we have about 1071 of those tiles. Thankfully, this new function takes a parameter where it lets you dictate exactly how many tiles you want to devote to the sprite engine. So instead of having it set at the automatic 420, we can give it a smaller number, for example, 300. This means that more tiles in VRAM would be devoted to the background tiles and the uh, sprites will be written a bit later on in VRAM, which hopefully will solve our little problem. Since we don't need the regular SPI in it, we can comment that out, then save and compile and let's take a look. And it looks like we have now allocated enough for the background tiles because we're not getting any corruption. And if we open up the debug menu again, you can see that there's a little black gap in between where the uh, background tiles end and our sprite tiles begin. Of course, in order to not to waste any VRAM, you're going to want to keep this gap as small as possible. But for our demonstration purposes here, this looks fine. And if we were to go back and change this number to a smaller number, for example 200, you should see that the sprites get written even further down into VRAM and that that gap is even bigger. I find myself using this function a lot for my Castlevania Symphony of the Night game because obviously some of the backgrounds there are absolutely huge in terms of unique tiles, although of course the more um, VRAM resources you devote to the backgrounds, the less you have available for the sprites, which is also a problem considering how detailed the sprites in Symphony of the Night are. Although it's kind of unavoidable when you're doing that kind of ambitious demake of a 32-bit title, but when doing your own graphics, I recommend you keep the VRAM as low as possible. Don't feel you need to max out the VRAM. For example, my GG Shinobi remake, I'm trying to keep the uh, VRAM use quite low, but you can still make it a game look even good, a level look even good using you know half the VRAM and so on. So don't max it out. You're going to create problems for yourself, uh, but try and keep it as low as possible. And the same with the colors and two, but of course it's up to you. You can push things as far as you want to go. And this is a very useful tool in doing that. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in this kind of content, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm interested in this.
And if you wish to support the channel further and want to get extra things, for example, the code for each lesson, then I have a Patreon and any support is much appreciated. You won't go unrewarded. Until next time, farewell.